Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the channel. Today we went south to Be'er Sheva. Uh, oh, ancient Be'er Sheva and the new city, new city of Be'er Sheva. So we're going to start here at the ancient Tell, the mound. So a Tell is a man-made hill that is built out of layers and layers of civilization stacked one on top of the other and they create a hill and uh, this is it, Tel Be'er Sheva So we read about Be'er Sheva in the Bible in the book of Genesis in the context of Abraham signing an agreement here with Avimelech the king of Gerar this is from Genesis uh, chapter 21. And Avimelech asked him, What is the purpose of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? Avraham answered, The seven lambs you shall accept from me, that you may be my witness that I dug this well. This is why the place is called Be'er Sheva. The two of them took an oath there. So the word Sheva has two meanings. It means the letter the number seven, Be'er Sheva, seven wells, but it also can be uh, spelled Be'er Sheva, the oath by the well, Be'er Sheva. So the word Be'er, B-E-R, means well. And here we have a water well. You can see the water well, it's a hole that you dig down and reaches the water table. So you can see how the well is <laughs> 70 meters deep. The well is outside the gate, city gate, so it can be used by the people of the city, but also travelers or bypassers, and they can enjoy the water from the well. There's the reconstruction line. This line here. So all this has been restored. And this is where we enter into the historic city of Tel Be'er Sheva. Beautiful. The gate was constructed with two rooms flanking the passageway and benches were discovered along the walls of one of the rooms. Ancient Be'er Sheva was a frontier city for about 500 years in the southern border of the Kingdom of Judea. The ruins that have been excavated and preserved are from the 8th century BCE, from the days of King Hezekiah. So from the observation tower we can see that the city of Be'er Sheva, the ancient Be'er Sheva, Tel Be'er Sheva, is kind of round on a hill, there's the gate, it is planned, there's roads, streets, and where we are now would be like the center, the temple, and look around us, we can see the city, the ro roads, homes, and this is the Bedouin town of Tel Sheva. And over there, that neighborhood is called Omer. The mountains in the horizon, that direction is the mountains of Hebron. It's not that far. And the modern town of Be'er Sheva is only five kilometers away. The three colonnaded structure is built in the area of 60, 600 square meters, served as the city's storehouses. Hundreds of clay vessels were uncovered in the building. And here, this is how it would have appeared the storehouses. So a city like this always struggles with the challenge of water supply for the town. So the water shaft is actually built as part of the city wall. There's the city wall, there's the tower, and underneath the walls they built two enormous cisterns and a canal. The canal collected the water that came down from the Hebron mountains and by building a dam they managed to divert 
part of the flood water to a filter pool. This pool would collect the mud and the rocks and clear water would fill the reservoirs that could be reached from inside the city. So the water system consists of a stone faced shaft 20 meters deep. So now we're going to go down that shaft. From Tel Be'er Sheva, it is a short 15-minute drive to the center of modern Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva is considered the capital of the Negev region and serves as the area's metropolis. The population of the city is 210,000 inhabitants, but because of its uh, institutions such as the hospital and the university, there are many commuters into the city. Modern Beersheva was founded at this location by the Turkish Ottoman Empire at the year 1900. The town was planned as an important crossroad center and as a way to serve and control the local Bedouin tribes. In the year 1900, Sultan Abdul Hamid II turned Beersheba which had been completely deserted into a new regional capital. The first building of the city was the government seat designed to impress visitors with the Ottoman Empire's might. It was built in 1900. And there's the... So the Saraya building is off limits. It is the, inside the police station. But across the street, we can visit the governor's house and the mosque. So this beautiful house was built in 1906 by the Turks as the residence of the city's governor. It was also used for official receptions and events. Today, the house and the yard are the venue for the Negev Museum of Art. So the mosque is not active and it is now used as the museum, a museum of Islamic and Near Eastern cultures. The Ottoman Turkish rule did not last long. On October 31st, 1917, Beersheva was under attack by the British Allied forces under the command of General Edmund Allenby during World War I. Allenby decided to break through the Turkish lines with a surprise attack on Beersheva. General Allenby planned a brilliant attack by sending the Anzac mounted cavalry forces on a detour maneuver 
that surprise the defenders from behind. This shows the attack of 1917, World War I, Beersheba, Israel. Uh, here it says 800 Australians and New Zealanders horse mounted. And here it says 1,000 Turks. And these arrows show the attack into the water wells, the Turkish hospitals, the mosque, and the railway station. These brave Australian and New Zealand soldiers charged into the city riding their horses, not knowing that their attack is the last cavalry attack in history. After the Battle of Beersheba, the road to Jerusalem was clear and the Allied troops advanced to Jerusalem and liberated the city in December of 1917. So the first road of modern Beersheba is now a vibrant and colorful pedestrian street. Look for number 94, as this house was the town's first private two-story building. It was used as General Allenby's headquarters. Then it was the Negev's first hotel. And since 1948, this is the Negev's first pharmacy. So, I hope you enjoyed this tour of Tel Beersheba, ancient Beersheba, and modern Beersheba. So, if you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. And please write a comment, let me know where you'd like to go on our next tour of wonderful Israel. And until then, take care, Litro, Shalom, Shalom. See you on our next tour. Bye.